Okay, so basically we're working in the shop and we get a call. Pick up the phone and it's a customer who's interested in having a fish done. Generally, I'll try and talk him into doing the reproduction. Reason being, you don't, you can control your mount more. You don't have your shrinkage in your fins and things involved in a skin mount and they're going to last longer and most time, most cases we can make them look more like a real fish than the actual skin mount. So in the case where he's actually got the fish, he'll bring the fish into the shop and we'll take measurements. The way that we do that is we'll take tape measure and we'll go over the top side of the fish and take the overall measurement. In this case on this fish blank it's 17 and 3 quarters length and we've got a girth measurement right at the front of the dorsal fin of 13, actually 12 and 3 quarter inches. In this case, the customer did release the fish and he brought us a reference picture like this and he's actually taken the measurements. So at that point, either way, we can go to the catalog and we can go down the reference of the type of fish the length and girth measurements and pick which blank is going to work the best. Once we've uh, finished sanding down all the edges and made sure that everything is thinned down to just the right thickness, we're going to want to test our head on the body. Generally this head is not going to slip right on there because when it gets heated up it'll distort a little bit. All you need to do at that point to reshape the head is to heat it. So. You'll notice when I set this head on, it seems to me that it's not going to fit. So I'm going to want to heat the head, it'll soften it, and then I'll be able to push it on. I prefer to use a hot air gun, so I'm just going to turn it on, and I'm going to keep moving it around the interior of the head. There's, we want the whole head to be warm, not just the gill plates. Once it's heated, you can just carefully force it into place and you can see that the head fit is perfect at that point. Then what you want to do is just hold it in place and let it cool a little bit and it'll basically stay like that until we're ready to do the installation. Okay, at this point our head is cooled down and it's basically going to stay where it is so it's going to fit back on the form when we're ready to install it. I might mention that I did pre-paint the gills before I test fitted my head. Normally I'll test fit the head first but for convenience at this point we went ahead and had the gills pre-painted. So the next step what we're going to do is we're going to install the eyes. When you order your fish the eyes do not come with the fish. That's so that you can decide which type of eye you prefer and order the kind that you like. There's two types of eyes. We've got the Tohican glass eyes and we've got the 600 flex eyes when I'm doing fish, most of the time I will use the flex eyes because there's a couple ways to install eyes and I prefer to install them from inside the blank and the other option is to use the glass eyes which will set right into the fish blank. Now, taking note of which way the pupil is directed, generally on a fish the small part of the eye will be pointing forwards and you can set the eye in place and this is the reason that I like to set them from inside because at this point you can determine which way you want that eye to be looking. You can act. So after you've determined how you want your pupil looking, you take your fin tape, press it along the front edge of the eye. The next step is we're going to mix up some Bondo and put it over the back of the eye to hold it in place. Scoop a little bit up carefully drip it inside around the eye. After I've got both sides done I'll just set the head off to the side and you'll let it cure. That'll probably set up within about two minutes or so but meanwhile we can start on a different part of the procedure. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to detail the seams and as you can see I've already started on one of them but I'm going to go to the top side of the fish and show you from scratch how we want to do that. There's a couple of ways that you can do this but the first step always entails taking either a grinding wheel or a little piece of sandpaper and just taking the little bit of edge off of there. There's virtually no edge at all here but if we don't do that when we paint it you're going to see just a little bit of a line there so that's why we're going to go ahead and do this detailing. Again I'm going to use this little 
grinding wheel or grinding stone on my Dremel tool and you have to determine on the fish how scaly or how smooth the seam is. On a warm water fish generally they have heavier scaling so I'll try and do a little bit of detailing to it rather than just have a smooth finished fin. I'm just going to go along and just with the Dremel tool and slightly touch the seam as I need to to take it down a little bit and put a little bit of texture to it. So you can see that was really quick and easy. Theoretically you could almost leave it like that but generally I'll want to go over it with a little bit of fine sandpaper to smooth it out a little bit. And then to finish it off I'll use a little bit of gla body glazing, spot putty glazing compound. This is basically like a lacquer base type thing. It dries really fast so you're not going to have to wait. But I'll go along the seam with just a very thin coat. You wait just a couple of minutes and that'll be cured and then go over with fine sandpaper just lightly. And that basically has finished my seam out ready to paint. Well I've got all my seams sanded now and after I've sanded them I generally will take my sandpaper and just go over the fins that are attached to the fish. The front leading edges will, will have just a slight line from the mold. As you can see it's not heavy duty sanding but you just don't want that line to show when you get ready to paint the fish. That being completed I'm going to turn the fish back over I'm going to take my little grinding tool and I'm going to just grind out a small area where I can sculpt my vent back in because in the molding process we have a seam there so we can't actually have that on the fish ready to go. The reason I drill it out is I'm going to want to put a little bit of epoxy putty on there and have a little bit of depth so I can sculpt the vent. After that's done, I'm at the point where I'm ready to install my fins. So we're going to grab our cardboard again, stir stick and a little bit of Bondo. I'll start with the front side pectoral fin. And again, you go back and you identify the fish by the thick area is up against the fish. The thin area is the side that blends into the fish. The longer side is the top side of the fin and the shorter side is the bottom side of the fin. So I'm going to want to take and set that fin in place at that angle in our pre-marked area. Okay at this point I'm going to grab my reference material and we're going to hold it up by the fish and I'm going to look it over and see what I need to do to finalize the, what, the detailing before I do my clear coat and I can see that I just need to do some black highlighting and it's probably going to be pretty close. So go ahead and grab the airbrush again. Grab the jet black. And I'm just going to start working some detailing areas that I've taken note of when I looked at the picture. Gonna darken the back up just a little bit and hit these spines at an extreme angle just to help them stand out a little bit. Darken the outer edge of the fin. I'm gonna go over the back at an extreme angle and just pick up a little more scale detail. Detail the tail just a little bit.
and I'll take a piece of cardboard and I'm going to lay it behind the edge, my, edge of my gill plate so that I can darken the edge a little bit without getting the overspray on to where I've painted the side of the fish. Darken the cheek just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and call that good and we'll go ahead and do that detailing on the back side of the fish and then we'll be ready for a clear coat. Well I've detailed the back side now and highlighted it and I've got everything looking pretty consistent the way I want it. So the final step is the clear coat. For that I'm using a Pache touch up gun. Um, it's a little heavier gun, a little wider spray. You can control it for um, putting on clear coats or putting on um, on bigger fish, a lot of times I'll use this to put on my colors also. But you never want to use less than this for doing your clear coat. For my clear coat, I'm using, like I said, a gloss top coat, which is going to be more of a matte finish when it's done because this customer didn't want to have a real glossy clear coat. But if you want more of a wet look, you can use uh, the liquid crystal. They've got it in an aerosol spray can, or you can go ahead and use it from your touch-up gun. So we're going to go ahead and spray. When you're putting your clear coat on, you want to go on lightly and build it. You don't want to get it on so thick that it starts running and you get sags. You can always, it dries really fast being a lacquer paint. So you can always go back and retouch. And I'm not going to go real heavy on this because all we want to do is seal the paint in and get a little bit of a depth. If I was using liquid crystal or polyurethane top coat, I would actually do quite a heavier coat. But on this fish, that's the extent that I'm going to do.